Once every four years, people come to Washington with revelry and song to celebrate the inauguration of a president of the United States. In 1965, it was to celebrate the inauguration of the 36th president. President Lyndon Baines Johnson. America returns here every four years to keep a rendezvous with history, with the memory of earlier presidents who served the nation. Abraham Lincoln took the same solemn oath as did William McKinley, whose inauguration in 1897 was the first to be recorded on film. In 1905, he was President Theodore Roosevelt. There are people who remember being spectators at the inauguration of President William Howard Taft. From William Howard Taft to Woodrow Wilson in 1913. For Mr. Wilson, champion of the League of Nations, it was the first of two presidential terms. The inaugural parade followed the traditional route of the presidents. Warren G. Harding was the new president in 1921. President Calvin Coolidge in 1925. Inauguration Day, 1929, the president was Herbert Hoover. Later, President Hoover left the White House and turned the executive powers over to a president who looms large in contemporary history, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. With the beginning of an era, President Roosevelt gave America new courage to face the crises of the 1930s and fight for liberty during World War II. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. He was President Franklin D. Roosevelt for four consecutive terms. In 1949, the architect of post-war reconstruction, President Harry S. Truman. You, Harry S. Truman, do solemnly swear. I, Harry S. Truman, do solemnly swear. 
You will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. That I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. In 1953, and again in 1957, Dwight D. Eisenhower, an immensely popular leader. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. That I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. And will to the best of your ability. And will to the best of my ability. Every four years, the presidents, from George Washington to John F. Kennedy, have kept this rendezvous with the people. On Inauguration Day 1965, it's the 36th President of the United States, Lyndon Baines Johnson. Johnson, do solemnly swear. I, Lyndon Baines Johnson, do solemnly swear. That you will faithfully execute. That I will faithfully execute. The office of the presidency of the United States. The office of the presidency of the United States. And will to the best of your ability. And will to the best of my ability. Preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. My fellow countrymen, On this occasion, the oath I have taken before you and before God is not mine alone, but ours together. We are one nation and one people. Our fate as a nation and our future as a people rests not upon one citizen, but upon all citizens. That is the majesty and the meaning of this moment. Even now, 
a rocket moves toward Mars. It reminds us that the world will not be the same for our children or even for ourselves in a short span of years. There are possibilities enough for all who will abandon mastery over others to pursue mastery over nature. There is world enough for all to seek their happiness in their own way. Our nation's course is abundantly clear. We aspire to nothing that belongs to others. We seek no dominion over our fellow man. But man's dominion over tyranny and misery. But more is required. Men want to be part of a common enterprise, a cause greater than themselves. And each of us must find a way to advance the purpose of the nation thus find new purpose for ourselves. For myself, I ask only in the words of an ancient leader, give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people for who can judge this, thy people, that is so great?
outstanding artist came to Washington to perform for the president in celebration of the inaugural. mandate from the people, the words of an oath and a vision of the future, a president begins a four-year journey into history. He follows in a tradition of leaders who were inventors, inventors of the American Revolution, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Emancipation Proclamation, the League of Nations, the Four Freedoms, the Marshall Plan, Atoms for Peace, the Alliance for Progress, the Peace Corps, and now, the Great Society. Just as surely as a hundred years ago, President Lincoln had given his second inaugural, 100 years from now, in the year 2065, there will be another man upon the steps of the Capitol taking the same oath. His name is unknown, for he is yet to be born. And he is yet to read of the men who came before him. And he is yet to find out the American purpose. But it is sure that in the winter of 2065, he will look back and say, 100 years ago, President Johnson stood in Washington. He stood where I stand, and lived in the house where I live, and dreamed the dreams that I touch. <laughs> 